Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to our That's No Moon base. This is the series in which we take viewer submitted modules and utilities for our moon base, and we land them on the moon. And that's basically it. Apart from the times where we don't land them on the moon, and we actually just put them in orbit around the moon. This footage is still from version 0.19. Uh, because, you know, obviously I record a couple of days in advance of posting, which means that I was completely unaware uh, that whilst I recorded this, point 20 had actually been released, which is interesting, but nonetheless this is going to get uploaded right here, right now. Right here, right now. And right here, right now, we have a communications tower Mark II submitted by Devon on the moon. And we have a hangar by Tanya Sapien. We have living quarters by... And we have a canyon... a cannon cool we had a canyon we have a cannon by some person I'm oh, sorry I forget the names and this cannon is so good it can do front flips yeah that, that's very funny come on come on get it get you back on your feet now soldier that's enough of that interesting how none of the parts have broken yet but you know we'll just try and roll using the nav ball and open the legs and you know. wow okay so this is the part of the video where I was just intending to take a look around the base to make sure, yeah, we have these things, we have these things here. And I end up actually turning this thing onto its body. Onto its head, basically, and that would be... Wow, I'd have to quick load up something, do something else if this was any normal new moon base. But no, on this moon base we have a moon tractor. <laughs> So this is just a dynamic a dynamic event happened and we went and fixed it. Or we're going to go and try and fix it. My tensors get mixed up when I do post commentary obviously. So let's go try and fix this. <laughs> those those landing legs are really strong. They can propel this cannon far really high up into the air. <laughs> I would say that's a bad thing except for the fact that it's actually kind of cool having to go out and repair things that break. It's quite funny having uh, utilities jump and land on their backs. As long as they don't break anything, it's absolutely fine. So let's go towards our Kerbal Howitzer. And uh, and we shall scoop this thing right up. Get onto our back landing gear and won't be able to move forwards because of the lack of rear wheel drive. <laughs> um, so what's happening in this episode? In this episode, as you saw from the title, this is our orbital base station thing in Majobi. And uh, we'll go into that once we actually put that into orbit. And that is actually all we're going to do, we're just going to put it into orbit. Um, and it will join our, our nuclear stage that's up there, already up there, that we put there in the last episode. Because, of course, having something in orbit actually gives us a reason to have this cannon. This cannon, which we've just managed to flip onto its front again onto its uh, onto its wheels so that's all well and good mission completed the moon tractor and its pilot uh, Kerman can go back to their hangar 720p it's 720p actually no I'm currently watching in 360p because it's my preview window probably less than that actually I'm not entirely sure but it doesn't matter because you're watching in whatever resolution you choose to watch that's actually an interesting question, that's something I've worried about for a while. Or not worried about, I just wondered about. Why do people ask other people to watch their videos in HD? Is there some incentive? Do you make more money out of it? Because, you know, me, I'm a complete money whore, so... If it's a way to make more money, then I'd like you to tell me, and I'd like you to watch in HD definition. But uh, I see no reason to really otherwise make you feel compelled to watch in high definition. What's the, what's the big deal, gentlemen? What's going on here? Why can't you watch in whatever definition you liked? It's just, I don't know, it's a weird thing that I notice that people often say, and I don't know why. Maybe it's to satisfy the fact that they put so much effort into getting you high quality footage that they want you to actually watch it in high quality. Anyway, this is the Bull's Eye Station, submitted by Hammer Wizard. Thank you very much for your entry. This is uh, one of the nicest ones on the forum, obviously that's why I chose it. It's really quite good, and the fact that it has two engines on it uh, makes it rather ideal. It also has the 
It has two main docking ports. Actually, no, it has three regular sized docking ports, one of which we're using right now, obviously. And uh, it has two junior docking ports. I was considering swapping those junior docking ports out for a, uh, you know, a big docking port. A, a Not a senior, because we don't have senior in this version, but a larger sized docking port. When I realised that, hang on, who knows what kind of things may be happening in the future. Having some cross compatibility between docking ports may not be such a bad idea. So that is the story of how we got docking ports. As I just adjust myself in my chair, excuse me. Meanwhile, listen to the nice music. That's two times speed for you. Ah, there we go. Right. So I'm making my uh, I'm making my transfer stage currently. What was on my mind when I did this was thought I thought oh, okay, what we'll do is we'll make a transfer stage, and it'll have its own power and everything, and it'll be quite fuel efficient, and you know we'll be able to go around and maybe use it as a sky crane or just to move things around in orbit. Yeah. I made it with that in mind as its goal, but not whilst I was constructing it. So we don't have any RCS on that stage whatsoever. And the things that we're going to be using to pick it up with don't have any docking ports on them. So it's all a bit of a mess, isn't it? Uh, nonetheless, let us warp round until we get to the point in our orbit at which it is a good idea to lift off our launch window for the moon. That's the one. And put on those lights. Look at those lights. Yeah, the bullseye station is quite nice. Uh, the bull bullseye station is quite nice and compact. I really do quite like it. So, yes. This is the part of the video where we've gone up to, I believe, four times speed. It may be four times speed. I'm not actually entirely sure. Whatever the case, it's the part of the video where we have the, uh, the transfer to the moon. And not an awful lot actually happens during this stage. Except for explosions and incorrect staging. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put the ship together properly, which is a—it's actually one of the. Uh, it's not the first, obviously, but recently, I've just gone into the pattern of yeah, make this. Wow, there we go. <laughs> I think one of the engines tore off, so that cancellation effect didn't really happen. But um, yeah, my my ships tend to work first time, like in the. In the overview, in the Kerbal Space Program 0.20 uh, overview, that lander ship that I took to the moon and I planted the flag on the moon, yeah, that actually worked first time <laughs> with no testing whatsoever. So that was interesting. Having this break in my face, like it did, just such a junior mistake not having your correct docking ports or your correct, um, no, the, the correct staging order, made me think, wow. Maybe I shouldn't have such a large ego, but no, no, I shall keep my ego because my ego is, uh, oh, my ego has the power to rival small cities. <laughs> As with the junior mainsail, uh, no, it's, it's not the mainsail, it's the Rockamax skipper engine, that's the description for that, a uh, power to rival large cities, um, whereas the mainsail was like small nations, I think. Ah, me rambling in my videos. I do ramble quite a lot. My throat's actually quite dry, I could do with a drink. I, th I found that the best way to commentate, because I've been asked a few times, I haven't really, I'm just making this up because I want to talk about it. I've been asked a few times by people saying, oh, how, how should I talk in my videos? And the thing I do is I just, every single thought that comes into my head, I put in storage as a possible conversation topic. And because I don't actually have many interesting things to talk about, <laughs> Unless it's something like artificial gravity or a, a mission that I'm directly involved in. Um, I end up everything I store away for possible conversation topic. Even all the not so amazing topics end up being topics. Just like this topic, which is a topic about talking about topics. About talking about topics. We are now in the moon sphere of influence. Which is a great achievement, and we shall bring down our periapsis to try and equal that of our target craft. Shouldn't be too hard. The thing is in a 15 or roughly 15 kilometer orbit. This is the uh, the nuclear stage. This this is the one with the history. This is the one that delivered our living quarters and then promptly fell over, which is quite nice of it for to do that for us. And uh, yes, it's in a 
roughly 15 kilometer orbit. 15 because that's how high... I could probably go to 20, but I'm very comfortable with launching Kerbals from our Howitzer Cannon up into a 15 kilometer orbit and having them circularize and rendezvous with their EVA packs. I think 15 gives them enough fuel whilst being high enough for it to be out of harm's way and a, a suitable height for stations. So there we go, we've set a we've set a manoeuvre node up for us to get down to the periapsis, burn, and burn such a way that we don't actually circularise, as we open our solar panel, we don't actually circularise, we end up basically just doing an extended orbit in order to come back round and join our other, our target craft. So we do some quick burning, having four nuclear engines, whilst they are individually weak, together they are strong. Or something. Try and get the maneuver node correctly on. This ship does have RCS, not an awful lot of it, but it does have RCS. There we go, and we've ended up with a intercept of nowhere near what it's supposed to be. That's interesting. Somehow, when we make the node, the intercept counter thing changes, which is really odd. I don't know why that happens, but there we go, we get towards our thing. We just want to point north and do some burning. There we go to adjust our inclination. And that is pretty much adjusted. Now we can burn retrograde and try and get our targets aligned. And there we go. Zero kilometer separation. That means we're going to hit it. Are we? Find out after the break. No, find out now. Are we actually going to hit it? I don't imagine so, seeing as I seem to remember slowing down. But you know, anything could happen. There are no real set rules in time travel, of course. And there we go, coming through, coming through. Oh, and look at that slowdown. That was perfectly timed. That was really nice, Harvey. Well done. Why, thank you. So now, of course, we have this... Uh, we reach this kind of awkward bit. Where it's like, Okay, we've here. We, we've arrived. We've joined you in orbit. Oh, hi. Um, what, what are we doing here? I, I don't know. Well, I'll get out of my ship. And I'll get into your ship. And it won't really change anything, because none of us are going anywhere. Yeah, apart from the one which actually has fuel, which is this transfer thing that I was talking about not being very well built. The nuclear stage, we put it in orbit because we couldn't just leave it lying around. That would be too lazy. And as a result, it's just in orbit floating aimlessly. It's got no docking ports on it, so we can't really take it home. Like was the kind of subconscious intention. This thing, for some reason, doesn't want to point in one direction, for whatever reason, I really don't know why. I think it's because in the... this has actually been fixed in point 20, but if you tell it to point in one direction and then go to a different craft, it probably probably turns off advanced SAS. Although I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Please, please don't quote me on that. <laughs> That's the one thing I really don't like about YouTube comments. I can deal with the occasional trolls, I guess, because I really don't get all that many. What I don't like is when people quote me. <laughs> It's like, ah, in in verse 7, clause 29, word 50, you specifically said this, which has the connotations of this. It's like, yes, you should know I talk out of my bottom the majority of the time, so <laughs> anything I say cannot really be attributed to this fact, unless I'm talking about a subject which I deem myself knowledgeable in. In that case, you know, it's the word of God, mate. It's just the, the law. And uh, this doesn't seem to be the case for this video, because it's not a very successful video. I mean, sure, we get to the station in orbit, that wasn't particularly hard, but we can't do anything with those two parts, and yeah, that, that that's it. We, we just can't do anything with those parts. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the Moon Base. That's no Moon Base. If you'd like to submit your utilities to this, then please do visit the forum thread, because I haven't decided what I want next. Thanks for watching the video, and I shall see you all next time. That was a great episode, wasn't it?